My name is Ian and welcome to Planted. I'm on a mission to help you do more with plants. In this episode, we're going to change things up a little bit and I'm going to share with you one of my all-time favorite plants, Salvia amistad. We've all bought plants with a huge degree of fanfare and enthusiasm, only to find out that they're kind of okay, nothing special. Salvia Amistad does not fall into that category. This is a true 10 out of 10. Well behaved, durable, tough, robust, has a very, very long flowering period. Here in Connecticut, it will flower from May through to the end of October. And it is just so beautiful. Sight it near some benches and chairs and you can sit down and watch butterflies and hummingbirds for hours on end. Salvia Amistad originated in Argentina as a sport from another salvia bush. Now, all a sport is is a little shoot that might have a different characteristic. It could be a different color. It could be a different flower shape, different flower size or just a different planting habit. Anyway, that little shoot will get propagated from, typically in cuttings to start with, and that's what's grown into the remarkable salvia amistad that we have today. Now, when you go and find your salvia, it'll be in a pot like this, maybe a three and a half, four inch pot, and it'll cost you about $10. You can buy it mail order, or you can buy it in person, but I would encourage you to go and get it. Go and get salvia amistad now, it's not that they are rare or difficult to come by, but the trick I want to share with you is that you should immediately pot it on. You want to put it into the next size pot, which is this. You see how much bigger that is. This is not salvia amistad. This is another plant that I'll feature in a future video. But you take it from this size and you put it in here, and it might be a number of weeks before you can plant it outside because of it being frost-free requirements. During that time, it can put out nice new fresh fruit, uh, ni nice new fresh roots, and it, you can give the top a trim, and that'll mean that it'll shoot from the base and give you a nice bushy plant rather than it being long and lanky. So you buy it this size and you pot it up into this size. This plant will give you flowers for the best part of five months here in Zone 7B, and that five months worth of flour for ten dollars two dollars a month fifty cents a week it's the best value you'll get you won't get anything better now many people will buy it at this size put it in the garden enjoy it and then when the frost comes in the fall it dies and it's gone and that's it forever but i've taken a great shine to overwintering plants you find these nice choice plants that aren't readily available and it's worth keeping them. Maybe take some cuttings, maybe give a few to your friend, or just keep the rootstock so that you have it for next year. So what I do is I take this plant, and the plant that I'm about to show you I've had for five years now, and I dig it up and I look after it. This is my Salvia Amistad. You can see we've got some nice fresh shoots in there growing beautifully. Uh, it's a very tough, very durable plant, and all I do is I dig it up, give it a bit of a root prune. Fine. You want to make sure that when you plant it, this is where it gets put in. It might be easy to accidentally plant it a little bit deeper, and then next year a little bit deeper still. Um, I don't know how long I'll keep this plant, but it's working for me now beautifully, so I'm going to keep on doing it. This will now get put into a pot, and it'll have uh, four to six weeks in that pot, and in which time it'll put out huge growth, maybe a foot, and there'll be 10 or 15 beautiful stems all growing from this, so that when it comes time to planting out in the garden, my plant's fully established, and it's much more advanced than this. When you put it in the garden, what can you look forward to? Well, many of the labels say this plant is a three foot high, three foot across. I found that not to be true. It's much bigger, and it's because I'm growing it from a much larger rootstock. This will grow five feet high, five feet wide, and it needs some space. Now, in the planted courtyard, I don't have much space, 
so good is this plant that I give up that space to grow it. Now to put the amount of flower in context here, last year I counted the number of branches that I got and gave each a value and I added up my flower count to be uh, over 2,600 flowers at one time. The plant is covered. Very, very floriferous, beautiful, reliable, consistent flowering plant. And another. Should you fall into the trap and try to overwinter some plants, there's only one thing that matters. Is it alive? As you see here, we've got some nice fresh shoots. The plant's ugly, but I know what this will become in just a few short weeks. Once I've resurrected it from its winter slumber and it's had four to six weeks in a new pot, that will really get it energized and get those roots active. And you can see here that we are rewarded with a foot to 18 inches of new growth. That new growth will very quickly start to show these dark drooping flower buds, which eventually will open up to the beautiful blue flowers that we see cover the plant in summer. Now pay attention to where you plant this. Give it space and you don't want to be forever pruning it. Let it fill out and let it flower. Here I put it next to my gate, and the idea is that it would grow through the fence, which is exactly what it did. Now, the nice thing about this is that I get good access to it in terms of viewing, and passers-by can see it, but I can also use the fence as part of um, a support system. Now, when you grow salvia amistad, the growth rate is substantial and the head can get a little bit heavy, strong winds it will blow down. It won't break but you may as well put in some sort of uh, stake and uh, support system so that you can protect it. Now the key here is do not in any way tie anything to the plant itself. In this situation I've got a line tied to the fence then it comes to a post and I can put a second post in Tie the line to that, and then I can go back to the fence. Now, what happens here is that the plant can grow freely. As it expands, it will also increase in height slightly, and I don't want to have any of that growth encumbered by tying anything to the plant itself. I like to put in canes that are about three feet high, and then I can tie two to two and a half feet high the first time, and if I need to, I can go back and tie again on the top of the canes, which will be three feet high. The idea is that the canes should be somewhat invisible. They should be buried deep inside the plant and not visible to the naked eye. And what you end up with is this very elegant, very attractive, beautiful salvia. Thousands and thousands of flowers. The only pruning I give this plant is a 25% haircut in early August. This allows it to flower for the rest of the summer. This is the Salvia Amistad. It's cut back two weeks ago, lots of fresh growth. This will flower into October. Last night was our first frost, and you can see that this beautiful salvia behind me got completely toasted. What happens is, as the temperature drops, the moisture in the cells swells, and then it ruptures the cell walls. Now some plants have got what's essentially an antifreeze, but many plants that can't take a frost, they don't have it, and this is one of them. So it's the end of October and this really is on its last legs. Thank you for watching Planted. Please tell your friends, please tell your family. Happy planting.